Welcome, and to all our viewers on Salt and Light. Today is Saturday of the 28th week in Ordinary Time. It is also the memorial of St. Margaret Uville. She is our firstborn Canadian saint. And so we begin our celebration with the sign of our faith. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. As we prepare to celebrate the sacred mysteries, let us call to mind our failures and ask the Lord for his pardon and strength. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart, Kyrie Eleison. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. God of mercy and compassion, you led St. Margaret Duville to embrace the way of the cross and to devote her ardent love to assist the needy of her day. Make us bold like her, we pray so that we may imitate your own compassion and have the strength to persevere until the day you call us to share the joy of your saints. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the letter of St. Paul the Apostle to the Romans. The promise that he would inherit the world did not come to Abraham or to his descendants through the law, but through the righteousness of faith. For this reason, it depends on faith, in order that the promise may rest on grace and be guaranteed to all his descendants, not only to the adherents of the law, but also to those who share the faith of Abraham. God is the father of all of us, as it is written, I have made you the father of many nations. In the presence of the God in whom he believed, who gives life to the dead and calls into existence the things that do not exist. Hoping against hope, Abraham believed that he would become the father of many nations. According to what was said, so numerous shall your descendants be. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. The Lord remembers his covenant forever. Remember the wonderful work the Lord has done his miracles and the judgments he uttered. O offspring of 
of his servant Abraham, children of Jacob, his chosen ones. He is the Lord our God, his judgments are all in all the earth. He is mindful of his covenant forever, of the word that he commanded for a thousand generations. The covenant that he made with Abraham and his sworn promise to Isaac, which he confirmed to Jacob as a statute, to Israel as an everlasting covenant. For he remembered his holy promise and Abraham his servant. So he brought his people out with joy his chosen ones with singing. He gave them the lands of the nations, and they took possession of the wealth of the people. The Lord remembers his covenant forever. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, I tell you, everyone who acknowledges me before others, the Son of Man also will acknowledge before the angels of God. But whoever denies me before others will be denied before the angels of God. And everyone who speaks a word against the Son of Man will be forgiven. But whoever blasphemes against the Holy Spirit will not be forgiven. When they bring you before the synagogues, before the rulers and the authorities, do not worry about how you are to defend yourselves or what you are to say. For the Holy Spirit will teach you at that very hour, what you ought to say. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Today's readings tie in beautifully with the memorial that we celebrate of St. Margaret Uville. She certainly was a woman of faith. And in our first reading, Paul explains that Abraham received God's promise through faith rather than the law, ensuring that salvation would be a gift. And in the gospel, Jesus exhorts his disciples to acknowledge him and his disciples who will come to their aid when they are tried before the authorities. How hopeful are we of God's love and grace in spite of our own sinfulness? I mention this because when we read the bibliography of Margaret Uville, this absolutely incredible woman. Here she was, she lost her father when she was very young and was penniless. And thanks to the generosity of relatives, Margaret was able to study at the Ursuline Convent in Quebec for two years, where she returned home and taught her five younger brothers and sisters. And in 1722, she married Francois Duville, who proved to be a selfish and indifferent husband, involved in illegal liquor trade. And when Francois died eight years later, he left Margaret with two children and an enormous debt. When she had overcome her financial difficulties, 
Margaret, Marguerite rented a house in Montreal in, eight, in 1737, where, she three and, where her and three companions and the rest and, 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 made the, and started the first great nuns. She sheltered needy, needy women for several years, and the four were slandered, persecuted, accused of being drunkards and prostitutes. Yet in 1747, Margaret was given charge of the colony's general hospital, which was in deep debt. And trusting in Providence, she worked hard and saved the hospital. And in 1765, fire destroyed the hospital. But Marguerite rebuilt it within four years. Following a brief illness, she died on December the 23rd, 1771. And Margaret was declared blessed in 1959 and canonized on December 9th, 1990. She certainly acknowledged our Lord as we hear of in the gospel. And Jesus talks about witnessing. I will acknowledge you. Even without knowing it, we witness to Jesus in countless ways in our daily lives. For example, Abraham Lincoln writes in his Civil War diary, of all the forms of charity and benevolence seen in the crowded wards of hospitals, those of some Catholic sisters were the most efficient. I never knew whence they came or what was the name of their order, more lovingly than anything I've ever seen in art are the pictures that remain of those modest sisters going on their errands of mercy among the suffering and the dying. On this memorial of St. Margaret Uville, what kind of witness to Jesus are we giving by our actions? As someone once said, Lives of great men and women all remind us we can make our lives sublime by departing, leave behind us footprints on the sand of time. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Accept the offerings of your church, O Lord, on this memorial of St. Marguerite, Uville, 
and from it grant us the wisdom and strength for the work of serving our neighbors in unity and in joy through Christ our Lord. Amen. And the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For in the marvelous confession of your saints, you make your church fruitful with strength ever new and offer us sure signs of your love and that your saving mysteries may be fulfilled. Their great examples lead us, lend us courage their fervent prayers sustain us in all we do. And so, Lord, with all the angels and saints, we too give you thanks as in exaltation we acclaim. are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, Christian, our Bishop, and his assistant, Alain, and all our bishops and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, St. Margaret, Duville, all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever.
Amen. At our Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare say, Our, our Father, Father, who art in heaven, heaven hallowed, hallowed be thy name. Thy, name. thy kingdom come, come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. And deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant in our days, graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. And Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. And the peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there, and I unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen.
Let us pray. Grant, O Lord, that the sacrament of which we have partaken may lead us to show your kindness and your compassion to all and prepare us for the joys of the banquet, of the eternal banquet, through Christ our Lord. Amen. And the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord and one another. Thanks be to God. Mm -hmm.